I've been up, night after night, no sleep, just thinking. Thoughts race through my mind like bullets from a gun. Will they like my next video? Do they even like me? Why did I buy Mighty Number no. 9 for the Wii U? I need a topic for this next video, and I need it fast. Underrated Albums Have you ever heard an album, loved it, went to see if anyone else likes it, and see the internet equivalent of a ghost town instead? Those are the albums I want to talk about today. I'm gonna try and keep it all a rock, because that's what I listen to the most. These aren't in any order, and I kept it to one album per band. With that out of the way, let's talk about some underrated albums. The first time I heard this record, I thought it was just good, but... Every time I've heard it since, I've really enjoyed it. Five of the songs on this album were originally from Zappa's album Laver, which didn't see the light of day because of a contract with Warner Brothers. The other songs appeared on Zappa's never-performed Broadway show Hunch and Toot. Like Hot Rats or The Grand Wazoo, we hear Zappa dive into jazz fusion on this record. Yet here, it's a lot darker in tone. I think a great example of this eerie tone is on the title track. <laughs> Along with that almost depressing atmosphere, you have some really amazing playing. If this seems interesting to you, I'd say to go check it out. You may be wondering who the Smithereens even are. They're a really great power pop band out of New Jersey. They had a few mainstream hits like A Girl Like You and Too Much Passion back in the late 80s and early 90s. This album, Green Thoughts, is truly an amazing record from beginning to end. Only a memory, a house that we used to live in, drown in my own tears, spellbound, all great songs that deserve a lot more love. If you're a fan of the Beatles, the Beach Boys, and the Who, this is something worth checking out. Also, if you get a chance to see them live, do it. They're a really fun band. Man, everybody really has been sleeping on this album. You know, when a discussion comes up about what the best Who album is, you see the usual Tommy or Quadrophenia or Who's Next. But this one really is as good as those. That's not a joke. I really do think this record is that good. The songs on this record are pretty personal, usually reflecting on Pete Townsend's life. The songs were written with me stoned out of my brain in my living room, crying my eyes out, detached from my own work and the whole project. I felt empty. The album conveys these emotions perfectly, and I think it's really upsetting that the biggest song from this album is Squeezebox. I'm telling you, Squeezebox is the worst song on the album. Also, if you're worried about it being too sad for The Who, This album 100% deserves some more love. Even though this album went two times platinum, I really don't see a lot of people talk about it. Insomniac was the follow-up to Dookie, yet its lyrics separate it from that album. They're much more real, in lack of a better term. Geek Stink Breath is about methamphetamines, Armitage Shanks is about being lost and disassociated, and 86 is about the band's falling out with 924 Gilman Street, the place where the band played early in their career. You can really hear the power and passion of the playing on this record. They really just let themselves go nuts. I really love the artwork on this album, too. It's a piece of art called God Told Me to Skin You Alive by Winston Smith, who also did art for the Dead Kennedys. Overall, I think it's a really great record that, sadly, I don't see a lot of people talk about. And hold on to the dream. This album gets a lot of hate, but I really don't understand why. 
This has to be one of my favorite albums ever. The final cut is a look at the post-war dream, Margaret Thatcher and War. It's definitely slower paced than The Wall, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Lyrically, this is some of Waters' greatest work. David Gilmour really plays some amazing solos on this record, even though there aren't that many. And even though Richard Wright isn't on this album, I think Michael Carmen and Andy Bound do a great job. I think the orchestration fits the music perfectly. The use of sound effects on this record is really immersive. The album cover and artwork I think are great. In the end, I really do think this is an amazing record. I think it captures what I think Pink Floyd does best. Reflective lyrics, cool instrumentation, great artwork, interesting use of sound effects. It's an album I think a lot of people need to give a second chance. There you go, those are five albums I think are really underrated. I'd be curious to see what you guys think in the comments below. I also want to say thank you to everybody who watched my last video. It seriously means a lot to me and I'm glad you guys liked it. I plan on doing more of these review essay things in the future, so stay tuned. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.